Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with a, another video. This time it is all on P9, which is motion. This topic is quite a small topic. Um, it goes through mainly looking at uh, distance time graphs and also looking a bit at velocity time graphs as well. The start of the topic of motion looks at the difference between speed and acceleration. And uh, in front of you here, there is a picture of a cheetah. And there's a reason why there's a picture of a cheetah on your screen. And that's because of the fact the cheetah is not just the fastest land animal on the planet, but it's also the fastest accelerating animal on the planet as well. We might recall that speed is equal to distance divided by time. And in other screencasts, we've looked at how to rearrange that equation to work out the other two parameters, either time or distance, using the triangle method. But what is acceleration? Well, the acceleration is the change in velocity or speed between two places. Remember the difference between velocity and speed is that the velocity has direction. This means that acceleration can be positive or negative depending on whether you're speeding up. So the acceleration of an object is the velocity at the end minus the velocity at the start divided by the time it's taken between them two spots. So if we look at the case of a cheetah, a cheetah can achieve speeds of 26 meters per second uh, starting from zero and that only takes them around three seconds. This means that a cheetah's acceleration would be 26 divided by three, which is 8.6 meters per second squared. That's the unit for acceleration. Now you can plot motion graphs either using a distance time graph or a velocity time graph. And these two graphs look very different. However, they are representing exactly the same journey. Both these graphs could be representing someone's commute to work or their uh, bus ride to school. But we need to interpret these graphs and make them into something useful for us and be able to explain the journey uh, that this person has taken. The first thing to do is look at um, the axis titles so to work out whether we've got a distance time graph or we've got a velocity time graph. So this one on the left, it says time taken in minutes and distance in kilometers. So that's the first thing we do. We look at the, the units and this one clearly is a distance time graph. Now we've got to be able to explain the journey. Well, what I like to do with distance time graphs or velocity time graphs is separate the journey uh, into different sections when there is either a change uh, in velocity or there is a change uh, in the distance they are moving in that certain time. So let, let's do that. So here we'll say that first bit of the journey is called A. Here there's a change in what they're doing. So we'll call that B, C, D here, E here and F here. Now I've separated my uh, distance time graph into different sections where they're either change in speed or direction. Uh, what we can do now is we can start to look at um, analysing this distance time graph. So between A and B, what is going on? Well, they're clearly moving, OK, because the distance is going up uh, with the time. So they are ending up two kilometres further away from their house and it is taking them two minutes. So to work out the speed in between these two bits, remember speed equals distance divided by time and that will equal two kilometers divided by two minutes. So his speed will be one kilometers per minute. You could put it into uh, meters uh, per second if you wanted to, however we're going to use kilometers per minute. Between points B and C, what's going on here? Well, we can see that there's a horizontal line and a horizontal line on a distance time graph uh, just simply means that there is stationary. So it's not moving anymore. So B and C, it's stationary. 
Uh, maybe they've approached a traffic light or they've stopped off for something, but B to C, they're not moving. And you can see this happens for six minutes, they're not moving. C to D, they start moving again. And you can see that it's a constant speed. The way you know it's a constant speed on a distance time graph uh, is the gradient stays the same. That means the distance is increasing at the same time as the time. And to work out the speed, you can calculate the gradient again. This one's going across eight minutes in uh, three kilometers, which is 0 0.375. Now this bit here between D and E is really interesting because you can see that there's not a constant gradient. So between D and E, this means the car or bus is accelerating. And you can see that the acceleration is uh, quite constant because of the fact uh, it's quite a smooth curve upwards. Between E and F, what's occurring there? They are moving at a constant speed again. However, they are returning back to where they started because their distance from home goes all the way to zero kilometers. And you can also work out the speed between that as, as well. And you can see that it's taking them 10 minutes uh, in order to travel um, seven kilometers. So the speed here, the velocity, you could say, um, the speed would actually be 0 0.7 meters per second, but because it's a velocity, because we're going distance from home, it's displacement, we know that it would be minus 0 0.7 meters per second, because you could do uh, 7 divided by 10. Now, if we go and look at the velocity time graph over here and see what it means translating over here, we can see the different parts of the graph uh, and what, where this changes. And they represent exactly the same point. So there's A, B, C, and then we've got uh, D over here. Then we've got E up here. And we have uh, finally F down here. And let's just check that all our calculations were correct. So between A and B, it's going at uh, one kilometer per minute. Between B and C, we are stationary. At C to D, we are traveling at 0 0.375 meters per second. Now, this is something we couldn't calculate. Uh, you could, if you drew a tangent to the line, calculate the acceleration at a certain point. But between D and E, it's showing constant acceleration. And we're going to work out how much acceleration it's showing between these two points. And that's the change in velocity divided by the time, remember. So we can work out the acceleration of a velocity time graph uh, by calculating the gradient of this line. So the change in velocity is one meters per second and the time taken is four minutes. So to work out uh, the acceleration, that's the change in velocity. So that'll be one meters per second divided by four minutes. So the acceleration will equal zero 0.25 uh, meter per minute, one kilometer per minute. Sorry, uh, it will equal 0 0.25 kilometers per minute squared. 